Perfect. Okay. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Silent Podcast, the place where we're anything but silent. Today, we're doing our exit interview with someone we're excited to talk to, but sad to see go. Dennis, Dennis, how are you today? I'm good. I'm just going to correct you. It's Dennis. Oh, Dennis. My apologies. I, I'm good. Processing, uh, readjusting to this new reality, uh, mm -hmm. but doing well. Thank you very much. Well, I'm so excited to chat with you. I know you're a super fan, so I feel like we have so much to talk about, but I want to start it off by talking about you kind of being the veto icon of the season so far. I know it's been three weeks, but you ate two wins back to back. I'm curious, why did you feel like you wanted to win that first and then second veto? Um, to be honest, I, I I owed it to the fanboy in me. Uh, I I wanted to lay low, but the fanboy was just screaming to win, to win. That first one was an easy one. Uh, I knew uh, uh, J9 was uh, a threat, or not a threat, but a target. Uh, <laughs> so it was easy to win it and just keep myself safe and there would be nothing. It was almost like a nothing week. So that was an easy one to win. I did want to throw the second one, but I just saw how close it was to winning and I, I could not resist that. I could not resist that. I feel in the end, I like I was a target regardless. So winning this just gave me safety and also gave me the pleasure of winning a second POV. Um, a man of a certain age winning this POV proves a lot and takes up that space that needs to be taken. Excellent. I was so hoping for that first veto that you would just maybe let J9 win it so she could save herself. Did you ever consider that? And do you think that J9 being in the game could have made any difference for your game? Oh, 100%. Uh, that comp, half of it was in the dark. How easy would it have been to me just like literally to stand back and do nothing? Uh, again, it's that fanboy that just yelled at me. Uh, and, and it would be different. I don't know how, how we would have operated. Uh, maybe Janine and I would have been together and then grouped in with someone else that was a super fan. It would have definitely changed the dynamics uh, because I put all my resources into someone else that eventually betrayed me. I think those resources in Janine would have helped. But I also feel like Janine was doing things on the side that I wasn't a part of. Mm -hmm. um, and also the, the All-Stars winning that first HOH. Uh, do I want to go against that? Do I want to appease that power? Uh, these are all things I had to think of. It wasn't just one piece. There, there were a lot of moving pieces. The all-star factor really, that variable changed the entire game and the way you would approach it. If there were no all-stars, it would have been a different story. Absolutely. I'm curious. I know that there was this idea of a potential over 40 um, alliance or group and then it didn't really fully come into fruition and then I know that you were kind of working with Vivek and some other house guests so who were your priorities in this game truly um that 40 alliance uh dissipated quickly uh Tola uh approached it really aggressively which uh bothered Janine uh really set her off and yeah, it set me off to just, he came in like, okay, so who are we attacking? Like, it was just too much. It was too aggressive. And we're like, okay, if that's going to be your gameplay, then mm, that's too messy. We don't want to deal with that. Um, I, yeah, I put in the time with Vivek. I was trying to do a general thing. I wanted to get to know people using my own skills and weaponizing them uh, to understand the way people thought. And so I tried to spread that at the beginning. And then it just got shifted and concentrated on Vivek, unfortunately but I was trying to just understand everyone uh, and then go from there. Like who would provide me the tools I needed to move forward? Like I didn't make alliances cause I was still trying to suss out who would be advantageous if I needed them. So in that pool room after your back door, we really saw you come down on Vivek rightfully so about him ruining your game and potentially his own game. Cause you were questioning like, what are you gonna do now? I'm curious if through today or through things that we maybe didn't see, if you gained any clarity on where Vivek thinks he's going in his own game. Cause his goodbye message left a lot to be desired really. Yeah, and, and that's the point. I think he's an impressionable person that got 
his ego got stroked or he, someone offered it. Someone with a golden tongue got to him and, and provided things that he his ego needed. I think, and, and it's a sentiment in the house, he really wants to be with the boys, which I absolutely hate. <laughs> I can tell. Divide, but he <laughs> wanted to be with the boys. And like, dude, do you, I, do you not realize you're going to be at the bottom of that? Like they're bringing you in at the last minute. You're just going to be at the bottom. And you're known as a liar. You're just going to be dragged along. And now you're a betrayer. It, it none of it made sense none of it made sense um i think i think he's playing small there's a bigger game here and he's playing just very small and hoping that will get him by in in that sense as well in your gameplay i feel like you saw this bigger picture which was refreshing to say the least i feel like there was a lot going on and i felt like you're the only one really tapping into that potential. So I'm curious to you, what was your sense of agency in the game at that point? And how how were you hoping to navigate the game had you maybe won that HOH instead of Vivek? Uh, I, I like that word, because uh, this week I felt like my agency was taken away. Uh, but before that, I was, it was impressed upon me from, again, the gender divide, the girls, that, yeah, they agreed that they were operating in fear and this needed to happen. And I felt like, okay, if we agree here, then if I say it, are we going to do it? Do we have the vote? And, and there was a lot of vagueness, but there was still an underlying understanding of what needed to be done. So I, I found hope in that. <laughs> I found reassurance in that. And I don't know. It just kept swaying back and forth. I don't understand what happened. I feel like I feel like there's a mole that caused paranoia uh, because information kept getting leaked. And I think the girls saw that and were afraid of doing anything. And they even said that they are, are working, they are playing this game out of fear. So I'm curious uh, what you thought of the goodbye messages specifically from Spicy and Anthony. Uh, and if those messages gave you any insight to where you ended up ultimately. Speaking of a mole, I, I feel like Spicy was telling me that she had more to do than I, I, I thought. Girl is chaotic, but but something in that message told me there was something more to, to Spicy. And Anthony, I'm sure through your smiles, you'll let me know, just came off a little arrogant. Uh, I know it's good TV. I get it. But dude, you're not operating inside of a vacuum. This was not all you. You have opinions. You have people who did the work. Uh, you are just giving them platitudes and sugar uh, that they're operating on. It was not just you, my friends. Um, that's, that's where I'm going to end there. <laughs> You made a reference to the house kind of being like the occult and Anthony kind of being this nucleus uh, in the DR, which I thought was a very funny comparison. What do you think needs to be done in order for that to be dismantled now that you're outside of the house? Um, if you're not going after him, um, then go after the people around him and, and take away that power. Anthony can only operate, like we saw in his season, with a group around him. He, he, he's able to put that group together, but he needs it. You can actually even stop listening to him and not engage in the conversations or allow those conversations to happen. And his power is gone. His power is through words and inspiring you. Uh, and if you just take that away, there's not going to be much left in. Um, I'm curious, who do you think is going to follow you out the door? Who, who would you like to see follow you? And who do you think our pre-jury is going to be? Like, what is your sense of all that? Uh, I would love for Vivek to be following me. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like the way the house has operated, whoever mentions this group uh, or whoever mentions he who should not be mentioned uh, will be the next one. And I have a fe bad feeling that it'll be another girl. I don't know who's one HOH, uh, so that that is a huge factor. I'm operating on what it, the pattern that has happened so far. Um, I look forward to talking to that person and gaining their insight about the game as well. 
I wanted to end off with a little game of super mm. relatives. I thought yes. it would be fun to kind of like pick your brain on some other aspects. So I'm just going to give you a category and you can name the house guest you believe that corresponds to. And I would love if you give us all the tea and your thought of reasoning behind those choices. Perfect. So the first pick will be, or the first category I'll say is sneakiest player. Sneakiest player. Other than Vivek? You can uh, say any other is, is, No, that's sneakiest player. Sneakiest player would have to be Avery. Mm. Uh, there has been, I don't know if it's shown, I was speaking to Vivek about how there's something inside me that is not trusting Avery. And I don't know if she's felt a little overconfident because she wants safety for this week, but something is not sitting right. And I've noticed a shift in her confident, confidence in the house. As in it's gone up? Yeah, and, and almost a little too cocky. Uh, uh, you you actually saw it in the egg competition, I think, if it's out there, uh, that she was just drinking coffee and eating the bacon. Like, we're, we're competing. What are you doing? What are you doing? There's just something a little sus about that. Mm. Now, who, about do you, who do you think is the most underrated player? Right now, Kayla. She is growing uh she has some skills she has some skills uh that are developing and i am truly impressed we've had conversations and every time i speak to her her confidence just grows more and more i i love that girl i love that girl there is something about her um that will take her far all right and who do you think is the most like underestimated player underestimated todd Everyone thinks he's this subtitled, uh, uh, monotone mumbler, can't understand him. Man has a brain. Man has a good read on what is going on in the house. Uh, and he's afraid to do anything because he sees how sporadic and emotional people are in the house. Uh, he has a good read. Okay. Well, thank you so much for playing the game and having a amazing conversation with us. We appreciate you. There is so much love out there, and I'm so excited for you to receive it. So um, congrats again on getting on the show. I know it's been a dream of yours. You said it's been 10 years. So really, you should be very proud of yourself. And I, I'm sure you are. And the love and support you'll get will really encompass your experience. So thank you again for talking with us. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you, guys. You too as well. Thank you very much for everything. You're welcome. You're awesome, Dennis. Thank you.